A journalist at Think Progress asked Al Gore, former Democratic nominee, what he thought about people who were considering voting for third party candidates but were concerned about climate change. And he was very clear that you should not vote third party. So he states, I would also urge them to look carefully, as I know they have, at the consequences of going in another direction for the third or fourth alternative. The harsh reality is that we have two principal choices, and I am supporting Hillary Clinton. Again, I respect those who analyze the situation differently, but in my experience, it matters a lot. Well, I'm glad that he respects those who want to analyze the situation differently, because that's exactly what I'm going to do. Here's what he's doing. He is taking the fact that he ran a shitty campaign and is blaming it entirely on Ralph Nader and people who voted for Ralph Nader in 2000. He's effectively saying, don't blame me for running a terrible presidential campaign and picking Joe Lieberman as my running mate. Blame the few people that were dissatisfied with my shitty campaign and blame Ralph Nader. I'm going to be really nice here. So I'm going to clue Al Gore, Hillary Clinton, Tim Kaine, all these centrist corporatist Democrats in on a secret here. If you actually are not a shitty candidate and can inspire people and be a real progressive, you don't have to worry about a third party threat. Who didn't have to worry about a third party threat? Hmm, let's see, Barack Obama. Even though we know he's a centrist corporatist Democrat, he ran as a progressive. He knew how to inspire people and galvanize the base. It's not just because he's charismatic. It's because of his policy positions. It was because of the ideas he represented. We believed that he would not conduct politics as usual, that he wouldn't allow lobbyists to run his administration. We were wrong, but he at least ran a good campaign in that respect and fooled us that way. He didn't have to worry about a third party threat. Did third party candidates exist? Yes, Jill Stein ran back in 2012. Nobody heard of her because Barack Obama was a very strong candidate. But for some reason, Al Gore and Hillary Clinton, two really uninspiring presidential candidates that are proposing only incremental change, have to worry about third party challengers. Hmm, I wonder why this is. Why is it that only certain types of Democrats centrist, corporatist ones, have to worry about third-party challengers, whereas the other ones who run as left-wing candidates, they don't have to worry about third-party challengers. Why is that? Hmm. Maybe you didn't inspire enough people to vote for you. Is that Ralph Nader's fault? No. Is that the fault of the people that voted for him? No. So here's what Democratic candidates need to do from here on out. If you see that a third-party challenger becomes an increasingly bigger threat, you need to reevaluate your policy positions because you're doing something horribly wrong. Turn around, you're moving away from the base, and they're abandoning you because of what you're doing. And let's actually look at the facts here. Most people that voted for Ralph Nader were either independent or registered Green Party members. So one could actually argue that they weren't even part of the Democratic voting base to begin with. So they weren't yours to lose. But here's a less convenient fact that everyone forgets. More than 100,000 Democrats across the country actually crossed party lines and voted for George W. Bush. Why aren't you blaming them? The Democratic establishment is actually more outraged when we support independent or Green Party candidates like Jill Stein or Bernie Sanders than when we support Republicans. And here's the most important part. The Supreme Court is the one that actually decided this election by denying Florida the ability to do a recount, which it was later determined that you had actually won. So had you actually fought harder, you could have won, but you were quick to give up on the battle in true spineless Democratic fashion. You guys don't like to fight for your ideas and fight for your principles, and that's why you lost, Al Gore. And I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Let's say hypothetically that it really was the case that it came down to Ralph Nader, and he was single-handedly responsible for costing you the election. This election is different. That doesn't even matter because you had a spoiler on one side. In this election cycle, you have a spoiler on both sides. You have Jill Stein... And then you have Gary Johnson and you actually have Evan McMullen as well. So you have two potential spoilers on the Republican side and only one on the uh, Democratic side. So we can't call Jill Stein a spoiler. It's factually inaccurate because a spoiler is someone who takes votes away from one candidate. So if anyone was going to worry about spoilers this election, it should be the Republicans. And also, let me just say this. It's currently the case that Hillary Clinton is leading in basically every single poll. When you look at real clear politics averages, she's ahead by a pretty large amount. So they're not actually worried right now that Jill Stein is going to cost Hillary Clinton the election because Jill Stein is included in many of those polls. Here's what they want. I'll tell you what they want. They want 
the Democratic Party to be complete and utterly dominant. They don't want Hillary Clinton to have any political opposition whatsoever. And here's what they don't realize. If Jill Stein wasn't an option, I still wouldn't vote for Hillary Clinton. I would just write in Bernie Sanders. So by saying I shouldn't vote for Jill Stein, you're not going to automatically sway me to support Hillary Clinton. So here's my advice to the Democrats who are irrationally afraid that Jill Stein is going to be a spoiler. Rather than dedicating all the time and energy into trying to convince people who clearly told you they wouldn't support Hillary Clinton during the primaries to do what they don't want to do, rather than trying to, quote, correct the record online and on YouTube and Reddit, why don't you get off your asses, come out from behind your computer, and register some new voters that will actually support Hillary Clinton? See, because if Hillary Clinton loses, she doesn't get to use Jill Stein or her supporters as a scapegoat for why she lost. It will be because Hillary Clinton ran a shitty, terrible campaign. It'll be because her supporters were unsuccessful at putting in the time to phone bank and face bank and canvas for her. And she also has the entire corporate media establishment on her side. So if she loses to a gigantic buffoon like Donald Trump, who is someone she should be beating easily with this advantage... She has no one to blame but herself. And that goes for you too, Al Gore. You had no one to blame but yourself. You didn't inspire enough people. If you had enough people voting for you, if you had enough supporters that were inspired and wanted to fight for you like they did for Bernie, you wouldn't have had to worry about Ralph Nader in the first place. But he didn't cost you the, the election. You cost yourself the election because you didn't want to fight and you were a poor candidate. <laughs>